can do whatever you want. I made you for three. And today, for today's Tooks and Rapper episode, it's a reaction. This time back again with Ness Ret with Nessie Retro's creepy slash strange video ice YouTube iceberg. And here's a twist. The main four will be watching this. That being AG25. Rapper Alex, Rapper Alex, Rass, let me find out, we're in here, and AG43, with a cameo appearance from AG.Swag, because he likes memes, and so with that said and done, and out of the way, Let me just find him. Where the fuck is AG43? Finding every character here but AG43. Ron, Slash.x, GamerX50, UXC, Fleeka. Where the fuck is AG43? If he doesn't show up, I'm gonna just have those four. So far, I haven't seen AD43 yet. Let's see, I found Rass, Rapper Alex, and AD25. Everyone but him himself. Am I missing something? There is AG43. I found his ass. He was hiding, but I found him. Alright. Yo, guys, you ready to react? React to what, AG43? Yeah, why the fuck are we dragged here at fucking 9.34pm? Yeah, and why the fuck am I here? Well, guys, remember that YouTube iceberg? Oh, God, don't tell me we're gonna... React to it again? Yes. But wait, wasn't that shit crazy? Yeah, but it's actually pretty good. Just, just, just watch. Ugh, oh, fine. It better not be boring like it was also. Shut up! ...to its creation or where it came from at all is simply unknown. Other Lily. What? Other Lily is an animated horror short directed by David Romero and uploaded to YouTube on the Let's Read YouTube channel in February the hell? of 2017. The short features Lily and Beth, who, who I like to think are sisters, but it's not really explicitly stated. Anyway, Lily goes up to Beth's room before going to bed herself and comes across a drawing Beth made of herself and Lily together, ah. alongside another figure that Beth labeled Other Lily. Brushing it off, Lily goes to bed, only to awaken to a creature entering through her window, what? only for it to have been a nightmare, though when she checks her phone, it begins glitching until a noise downstairs alerts her. After confronting the monster, we then see that this too was simply a nightmare huh? that Beth was having. Beth then goes downstairs and is taken by the monster. It's the a hell? decent short. There's a fair bit of depth in regards to the dreams that both I sisters guess. have regarding the monster, and that of course lends itself great to repeat watches. What? Poco Poco Shopping. What the hell? Back once again to Nana eight two five seven six three. What the fuck is this? Yo, me... we've talked about them a couple times what? now with username six 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 as well as the point specifically about their channel. 
but the now hell? we come upon Poco Poco Shopping, which is actually one of my favorite videos of theirs. Guys, check the this video out. presents itself as a home shopping what? network type deal featuring puppets and a kawaii aesthetic with a dark twist. The dialogue is absolutely hilarious. Like, I straight up think this is a comedic what? masterpiece of a video. I suppose it's on here because the imagery does start to get dark with blood and gore, but really... It's awesome. I don't like. This is one of the I don't like that. Oh yeah! Shout out to Nasty Retro. And it's it's Sub funny, to him. creepy, everything all rolled into uh, one. Okay. Definitely check this one out. Camera heads. Wait, isn't that camera like Skibidi Toilet? Where like the or like the, or, like the camera guys were attacking the Skibidi Toilet? Oh yeah, you mean? Oh yeah, you mean the guys who have the cameras for the heads who are trying to flush the Skibidi Toilets? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, eighty four three. Eh, a eighty five. A eighty two five. Didn't you do like a fucking reaction to Skibidi Toilet? Hey, what do you know? I did. It was weird as hell, but yeah. Wait, you reacted to the Skibidi Toilet? Yeah. So what? So what? He's the guy behind thousands of memes. The Skibidi song is popular thanks to the fuck boom. Wait, did you say the f word? Bro, I literally said fuck earlier. How come you were asking him? Shut up. What the fuck? Heads is an early creepypasta that emerged oh. from 4chan reportedly around 2008, though the exact date what? is unknown. A video appeared on YouTube in August of 2009, simply titled Camera Head, uploaded to the channel Katyokov, though what? the description reads, Weird video I captured from a mini DV I found in a gully near my house. What's a gully? Strangely enough, Don't given know. how popular camera heads What's a gully, AD43? This video only has just under 30,000 I have zero views. fucking idea. Very strange, given that it was very much at the beginning of the phenomenon. Given the small scale of this video, no one knows who made it or where it came from. The channel it's uploaded to was created in August of 2006, which is strange. Most one-off videos were posted within the same month that the channel was created, but that's not the case here, where there's a three-year gap between the creation of the channel and the upload date of the video. Weird, huh? Either way, that makes this video a mystery and simply part of the camera head creepypasta lore. What? Plastic men. Here we've got yet. A Wait, hey yo, is that the guy from the beast video? I am the beast that cuts the feast. Now, now, now that it's cut, you can sing in your teeth. I am the beast that. I am the beast that counts the beat. Make sure it's make sure it's nice to stay on repeat. I am the beast with PTSD. I need some help, so I go to therapy. I am the beast. I, I am the beast with your deceased. I put them underground, so they go underneath. Hey, when do you know we're all on beat? Beast! Sheesh! What? You a mystery and simply part of the camera head okay. creepypasta lore. Plastic Men. What? Here we've got yet another Treats for Beasts video. This one called Plastic Men, uploaded in June of 2012. What? The video is just as bizarre as everything else Treats for Beasts has made, and many in the comments believe it's about child abuse, which very well may be the case. What? I don't even need to talk about how strange it is because, I mean, again, it's treats for beasts. You already know. We've talked about them a few times now, and you'll see a little bit more from them in just a little bit. The Smiling Man. Why? The Smiling Man is one of two things here on YouTube, so in order what? to not accidentally discuss the, the wrong thing, I'll just discuss both to be safe. The Smiling Man is a short film uploaded to YouTube in July of 2013. Oh. It's based off of a Reddit Let's Not Meet story about a man walking home late one night, only to come across a strange man who appears to be walking yet also dancing at the same time on the path in front of him, only for the encounter to turn nightmarish. This video was made by YouTuber Michael Evans, who also has numerous other videos on his channel. The other video that this point may be referring to is also simply called The Smiling Man and was created in August of 2018 and uploaded to the channel Alter. Directed what? by AJ Briones, this short features a young girl in her home coming face to face with a rather disturbing humanoid creature. My favorite thing about this entire short is how rather unfazed the little girl seems of this horrific creature. Yeah, if I was there and I saw that, I'd be like, who this? I'd be like, what the fuck? Though I don't really have much else to say, so on to the next. Angel. 
Hmm. The only creepy video I can find with the name Angel is this. Ah! I'm sure many of you have seen this before, most <laughs> likely uploaded under a different name, as there was a time when this puppet thing was all oh, over the up. creepy side of YouTube. He's going like Blame this. Not, George has a video with well over a million views explaining exactly what this thing is, but I'll summarize. Pardon my pronunciation here, but the puppet is called Ratafak Plakta and is from a Czechoslovakian TV show what? called Slniko, which was an educational children's program. Now, I don't have a whole lot to say after that because, I mean, there you go. The puppet is from a show, and the angel video is just a jumbled edit of the puppet with some strange audio thrown in. But here's the crazy thing. Reportedly around 2008, the puppet of Ratafak was donated to the television station where the Sneeko show aired. And the people what? there had no idea what it was or the history behind it. And What's the Sneeko show? it was show? just some creepy thing made by some random person and sent to them as a prank what? they just threw it in the trash yeah i agree after this incident mm. someone found the puppet and used it to make all sorts of videos such as the one that the angel video uses as its basis this story isn't entirely confirmed and there have been other videos such as a 2019 award show with a short featuring ratafak but of course that could just mean there were multiple puppets made which would of course make sense yeah anyway, i guess for the sake of the iceberg the Angel video was uploaded to the channel GG in July of 2017. Finally. Grave robbing for morons. The fuck? Grave robbing for morons has a very mysterious history. It features a man named Anthony talking for nearly 30 minutes about grave robbing and different ways he's gone about doing it over his career. The fuck? The video reportedly comes from the late 1980s or early 1990s when underground VHS tape trading was at its peak. Ah. During this okay. time, people would exchange bootleg tapes of movies, TV shows, and sometimes more questionable content that may or may not be on the legal side. From what I've found in research online, the video is famously part of a set along with three other short films packaged together on a VHS ah, and, okay. more recently, DVD, known as Ensuring Your Place in Hell. The other three what? shorts included in the set are Mortuary of the Dead, Exploding Vermin, and Cooking with Huck Batko. But we have enough to talk about Fuck. with grave robbing for morons, so no let's grave. get back to that. I don't like As grave the others robbing. have been proven to be fictional, with the exception of Mortuary of the Dead, which is kind of in an unknown gray area. What the fuck much is like this? Grave robbing for morons is. It's about grave the robbing. The film was, for a while, I considered know that. to be created by director Christopher Boche, and even the IMDb hell? still states that he is, in fact, the director, but Christopher Boche himself simply only used to sell the tape on his old website. Nothing really more to it than that. Boucher is denied involvement with the tape and, in fact, was born in 1987, making his connection to it pretty unlikely. That's not to say that grave robbing for morons couldn't be made more recently and simply made to look older, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I guess there's such as little look. information about this video, so unfortunately, yeah, I, guess that could work. I just don't you know have what I like further that. to add. But I sure do love it, especially with its history in the VHS tape trading scene. Though I wasn't mm. able to take part in it as I was much too young, I love researching it and learning of all the mysterious videos that circulated back then, such as this one. Groaning Machine. What the this hell? This video, uploaded in January of 2014 by John Grieve, shows what appears to be what they refer to as a homemade groaning machine. What Basically, is that? it appears to be a bunch of wheels with groaning tubes attached to them. The you know, those novelty noisemaker things that are like a rod with a piece of metal or something in them, and as what? you flip them over, and whatever's inside them slides to the other side of the tube, Sus. they produce a groaning sound. Ew! Well, with fuck? this video, you get that groaning sound 35 times, as these tubes affixed wow. to these wheels spin repeatedly, causing the groaning tubes to endlessly wail. What the creation of such a device could ever be used for is beyond me, but here it is. It's pretty amazing. Like, you can have this thing set up in your house and it'll be all you hear for eternity. Awesome. What? Why? Agent Giant Fun. spider creature. Spider! Reportedly recorded in India and uploaded to YouTube in April of 2015, this video depicts what appears to be a, well, Spider-like ah! creature slowly climbing up the side oh, of the building. Oh, I know, that's from Bill's channel. 
only has four legs as opposed to a spider's eight, but you fuck? get the idea. The creature climbs up onto the roof of one of the large buildings before vanishing out of sight. Unfortunately, there's very little information about the history behind this video or where it came from. However, we will be talking about another video very similar to this one soon. Soon? What does that mean? The Bells. Short horror film. What does that mean? The Bells is a short film directed by Virat Paul and uploaded to his YouTube channel in October of 2018. After the death of a family member, our main character, Jim, while on the phone with another family member named Caitlin, starts to hear the sound of a bell off in the distance. Exploring the source of the sound, but with no luck, the sound of the bell gets louder and louder to the point that it's deafening to Jim. Eventually, the sound stops, though Jim continues to investigate until he comes across a trail of blood leading to a bloody cloth with what looks to be, I don't know, to me it looks like a fetus. Jim then proceeds to grab his car keys before feeling a hand on his shoulder. He turns around, at first seeing nothing, but then realizes it's standing right beside him. The epilogue is that now Caitlin's son starts hearing the bells, however, she's unable to hear that. It's a decent short, but the monster thing is really the best part. What's that? What? This is a video mm. that was uploaded in June of 2009, though I do believe the video was made earlier than this, as the channel it's uploaded to is one of those re-uploading channels that has a bunch of random videos about various things, none of which are anything like this video. Anyway, the title is Indonesian and translates to Toyol sightings in the Bogor area, Bogor being a city in Indonesia. A Toyol is said to be an undead infant in Indonesian and Malaysian folklore, and is said to be summoned by shamans in order to rob people of their riches. In this video, a group of friends mm. hang out in what appears to be the backyard of a house, playing okay. guitar and singing and just having a good time. Sounds good. Suddenly, a creature crawls out from the ah! back as the group is not very I took his spot. Why would you do like, that? At all. Shit it's very Google. strange. The subtitles for the video make it come off as Google, Google, the Google, camera Google, man can Google, see it, so Google. maybe it's only visible on the camera and not to the naked eye? That would make the most sense, as again, it crawls right up to the one playing guitar and the person next to them, and they don't even see it. It's a very strange video, and one that I've never seen talked about before in any of those top creepy YouTube videos, despite this video's age. It's videos like this that I love finding in the research I do behind these icebergs. Ah. The Jester, short horror film. What's a Jester? This short film, mm. directed by Colin Krawchuk, what? seems very heavily inspired by the Smiling Man Let's Not Meet story that was also made into the short film The Smiling Man that we talked about a little while back on the iceberg, but with a unique twist. In a similar fashion, our main character is walking alone at night along a street when he comes across a strange character in a mask. As the jester performs various tricks, the man becomes more and more uneasy until the jester cuts his own arm, drenches a playing card in his blood, then makes it appear in the man's pocket. The man then proceeds to run from the jester, though he manages to keep up with the main character no matter how far he runs. I don't know. Finally, the jester puts a sheet over the man and makes him disappear as he proceeds to walk down the street and the short ends. It's an entertaining watch, short and sweet. It also has 18 million views, so you've no. probably already seen it. Uh, okay. La Noria. La Noria is a 2018 CGI animated short horror film directed by Carlos Bena, who has worked with ILM on Jurassic Park 3 and Star Wars Episode 2, among others as well as Pixar on Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and more. The short is about a young boy who, while attempting to make a toy uh. Ferris wheel, encounters a strange creature that proceeds to chase him throughout his house. I really don't want to say any more, I'll just say this. The short is much more heartwarming and wholesome than it is creepy, but it is a fantastic short. After watching so many over the course of this iceberg, I didn't think any would really blow me away, but this is worth watching. Just know, it isn't creepy. La Noria won over 75 awards, and it certainly shows. I the guess. animation is gorgeous, and the twist, if you can even call it that, is quite nice. I really love it. Burden. Burden is a YouTube channel created in October of 2009 and still uploads fairly often to this day. 
The videos don't appear to be part of an ARG or anything, just complete randomness, really. I've tried very hard to use that word as sparingly as possible because of how easy it is to call everything random, but this channel sort of deserves it. I have no real way of describing what any of these videos are. Yes, they're creepy, yes, they're strange, but I can say that about nearly everything on this iceberg. There's a theory that the videos are in some way a critique on consumerism and materialism, which very well may be the case given that across most of the videos, there are inserted clips of news stations and advertisement clips. On top of this, the channel's profile picture is of 19th century philosopher Philip Mainlander, known for his pessimistic outlook and claims that life is, in entirety, worthless, so that pretty much lines up with the general theme of the channel, at least if that theory is to be correct. Seinfeld Spitstein. What? Seinfeld Spitstein is a bizarre animation channel, and that's even taking into account the other animation channels that we've talked about on this iceberg. They created their channel in March of 2013 and have several videos with well over a million views each, so odds are you've heard of them. As a matter of fact, one of their videos is on the important videos playlist, and that's where I first saw anything of theirs. They're known for making CGI animated surreal videos with pop culture characters, though they're most known for the Jimmy Neutron video such as Rebirth and Jimmy Neutron Happy Family Happy Hour. Unfortunately, Seinfeld Spitstein hasn't uploaded since September of 2014, so we may never see any more fun Jimmy Neutron videos from them ever again, but hopefully they return. Mm. Video Dating Tape Wow. Here we've got yet another video that was uploaded to a channel the same day it was created and remains the sole video on that channel. Video dating tape was uploaded in March of 2017 on the channel Bala Clava Girl 95. What? In the description, they claim that they found the VHS tape at a car boot sale, which Sus. I have to look up what that even is. What's a boot sale? Like a Sell boots. Meet, like, Wait, boots and door the explorer? No, not so that kind of boots. Trunks. Boots. Anyway, that's what do you mean? You look like the thing you wear on your feet, like Tim's. Oh, yeah. I know Tim. No, Tim Berlin's. Oh, I thought you said Berlin. Oh, God, no. And what they're looking for in a partner, then send it to a company that would match people. So it's like Tinder, but instead you have to record yourself talking for five minutes. Tony talks about himself for a bit, and all seems rather normal for the most part. The tape clearly cuts out at some points and shows what appears to be a camera looking into a window of an apartment building. Upon coming back to Tony, his demeanor has changed and he violently starts hitting himself before continuing. As the video goes on, you can hear what sounds like a person in distress in the room with him before Tony ends the tape. Despite the concerning footage, our good friend Scare Theater was actually able to find out that the man in the tape is most likely a British actor named Darren Stoneham. And based off their investigation, that seems to be where the background of this video lies for now. Ah. The Popkeepsy Tapes scene. What? The Popkeepsy Tapes is a 2007 fictional horror film shot in the style of a documentary, documenting a serial killer in Popkeepsy, New York. The film features multiple interviews and instances of footage that the film states is from the serial killer's personal archive of recordings of the murders. The film had quite a troubled release history, first premiering at the 2007 Tribeca Film Festival, and was going to come to hmm. theaters in 2008, but was ultimately shelved. It wasn't until what? 2014 that the movie would finally have a video on cool. demand release, and it wouldn't be until 2017 that it would finally be released on DVD and Blu-ray. Awesome. This incredibly limited release, as well as the film's lack of popularity and publicity, meant that clips from the movie uploaded online could be passed around as legitimate, without much proof to the contrary. That leads us to the topic of this point on the iceberg. There's a specific clip in the movie in which a woman is seemingly held against her will, unable to move, while something crawls around behind her. It slowly comes closer into frame, revealing itself to be a person. The person then slowly begins to bring two needles up to the woman's neck before the tape ends. This scene was very popular on image sites such as 4chan, often presented what? in a GIF format, and many people, unaware of the source, would think there's a possibility that it could be real from, like, the dark web or something, but nope, it simply came from this film. Oh. Ghost from Japanese Subway. What? 
I this agree. is a clip what from a fuck? Japanese horror movie called Urahora, which is a 2008 anthology-style horror movie featuring various horror shorts, sort of like the VHS horror movie series. Cool. I recall this scene mm. being passed around a lot back what? in the earlier days of YouTube as being part of a YouTube Japanese horror, documentary am I right? or something, as if it was real. And a lot of people actually were convinced, and really, I can see why. Given its documentary style, it very much blurs that line between real and fiction, and the clip is genuinely quite creepy. It starts with a man discussing a recording he and his friends made while enjoying their time at a restaurant, as the man points out a specific woman in the background of the video. As the group moves on and finds themselves at a subway station, they see the woman again, only this time she jumps in front of the oncoming train. In the final clip, as the group is panicking, the woman's face can be seen just below the walkway, looking up at the group from below. This is certainly a movie I really need to add to my list. As we have Why? another segment coming up that uses a clip from this movie as well, oh, that God. we'll be discussing shortly. Rubber Johnny. What? Rubber Johnny is a music video directed by Chris Cunningham and features music by Aphex Twin. The video features a disfigured character named Rubber Johnny being interviewed by an unseen person. The man gives Rubber Johnny an injection after Johnny starts to freak out, and what follows is a rather intense music video of Johnny going crazy. This video freaked out a lot of people back when it came out in 2005. The entire video was made by Chris Cunningham over the course of three and a half years. And why would you do that? Like, stuff. seriously, why? It's a very creepy video, you have honestly. A Gatorade. Just imagine sneaking okay. onto your computer in 2005, trying to be quiet, then suddenly you see this. Yeah, good stuff. Postal 1 Loading Screen Music Postal is a video game series that started in 1997 and has had quite a bit of controversy with each release given its gratuitous amounts of violence. Now, for whatever reason, Christian Salier, the composer for the game, felt the need to make the loading screen music absolutely horrific. Like, this is the kind of stuff you'd expect to hear in a horror game, and Postal is by no means a horror game, but these loading screens would certainly make you think otherwise. What the fuck? What? Though I said that Postal is not a horror series, the first game certainly does have a very desolate atmosphere to it, especially compared to its more comedy-driven sequel. But still, this music is quite out there, and I'm not sure what they're going for with the style, but there you go. Brian. Brian is a CGI animation channel created in November of 2013 and would start uploading in December of that year. The channel has seven videos, all depicting surreal animation and featuring these bizarre human-like characters. There seems to be some sort of overarching plot, specifically with the blue woman and the red and blue man, and it ends with them eventually becoming parents, I think. Brian, the creator of the channel, also does the music for all of these videos and has a band camp. It's also worth noting that Brian seems to have a very dedicated following as many of the comments are all very supportive, which I love to see. Awesome. Ben Wheel. We talked about Ben Wheel a while back when we discussed his video, Henry Eats, but we'll go a bit more into his other works here. He created his channel in April of 2009 and primarily focuses on surreal horror style 3D animation. The most famous video, as mentioned earlier on the iceberg, was Henry Eats, but he has also some other crazy videos such as 1995squish.api and The Birth Tab, both of which are just as absurd and crazy as Henry Eats. In October of 2020, Ben uploaded a video called This Video Cursed Us, which is a compilation of reaction videos of various YouTubers reacting to Henry Eats. And based off the comments Ben made in the comment section, almost makes us feel like a goodbye to his YouTube page. At least that's the vibe I got from it. This remains his final video to this day, but luckily his channel still exists for our viewing pleasure. Creeper in my apartment. This video, uploaded mm -hmm. by You Know It Joe in November of 2009, was huge, even making it onto many news stations. The video opens with Joe explaining that someone was eating his food and drinking his beverages. What? And when he 
When he confronted his girlfriend about it, she denied having anything to do with it. Calling her out and hoping to catch her in the act, Joe decides to set up a camera in his kitchen, and what is revealed is everyone's worst fear. Oh no. A woman slowly emerges from a crawl space above Joe's kitchen and lowers herself into his apartment. She then proceeds to rummage through his refrigerator and pantry and takes whatever she needs and even watches TV for a while. At one Why? point, Joe even wakes up and the woman scrambles to hide. Joe comes out unaware of the woman hiding just feet away from him. When Joe goes back to his bedroom, she then lingers for a while longer before crawling back up to her space. This video is incredibly creepy and just goes eh, to show how okay. easily someone can slip by right under your nose without you even knowing. Joe was told by the police that it appeared that she had been there for at least a few weeks, but that's not a short amount of time for someone to be living among you, especially given the seemingly small space he appeared to live in. Her son can't stop growing. This video was actually called Her Son Can't Stop Growing at Night and was uploaded in October of 2020 by the channel Life oh. of Luxury, which is a massive channel with over 6 million subscribers. Yes, it is. Yes. The video alone okay. has over 34 million views, wow. so you may have already seen it, but anyway, Parker and Chester, who lead the Life of Luxury what? channel, conduct mock investigations into the paranormal. Ah, uh, yes, the like Gravity Falls. Adventures or Ghost Hunters, or my Ghost personal favorite, Home Inspectors. These videos are at least well made, and I love that they take them very seriously, but this point on the iceberg is talking specifically about the Her Son Can't Stop Growing in Night video. Basically, the plot of this video is that Parker mm. and Chester are called by a mother to help her discover what's wrong with her son. Throughout their investigation, they see the woman's son contorting and wandering the house. Like, Honestly, despite these being fake, they're hilariously entertaining. I can see why these videos have millions of views. They're actually incredible. Oh, uh, okay. Real demons caught on tape. No, not the demons. Uploaded by Chester Tyler 714 in what January the fuck? of 2009. Wait, they're demons? Guys, get the gun. Already prepared. Panel, I should have known. Human arms start coming the hell? The ceiling. First one, then another. And before long, there are suddenly dozens of hands all reaching down from the ceiling, seemingly without a source. Next, smaller arms start reaching into the room from underneath the door. An eyeball oh, that no. appears on the side of a wall, startling the cameraman who, after collecting himself, turns the camera, only to find a figure made up entirely of hands that then lunges at the camera. In the 2012 anthology horror film VHS, there's a segment about a haunted house that features arms coming okay, the wall very much like this video, and I'm curious if they took inspiration from this. From what I can tell, there's no information in regards to who directed or made this YouTube video, and the channel has no other uploads of any kind. Man gets lost in the catacombs. This famous real-life found footage is quite disturbing. Uh. I first personally saw it back in 2001 on the TV show Scariest Places on Earth, in which on one episode, they discuss the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs are located in Paris, of course, and are a series of tunnels totaling in over 200 miles uh. and containing the remains of over 6 million people. Why? Today, Why? a little under 2 miles of the tunnels are available for the public to access. I swear However, to God. there are many explorers who find their way into tunnels deeper, and that is where this famous video comes into play. No date is given on when this footage was found, however it seems to have been sometime in the early 90s. Most reports say 1993, though it's uncertain. Reportedly, the episode of Scariest Places on Earth that I mentioned was the first time that this footage was ever shown. However, it's presented by a man named Francis Breedland, an independent filmmaker who has done multiple small projects uh. over the years. All Francis says is that he found the film on a small camera that was found deep in the catacombs, and he appears to have the original camera that was found as well. Furthermore, Francis said that the camera was given to him with no other information. It's I'm back. Also worth Me too. Me too. Francis through. says that the catacombs have over 400 miles of tunnels, but what? everywhere I look online says 200 miles. So I swear to fucking God, AG43. This could what? just Rap be my Rouse. skepticism talking, but this is going weird. back to how this guy mm -hmm. was a filmmaker, it makes me wonder if this was all just made up. 
This Scariest Places on Earth episode aired 22 years ago, and it doesn't seem as if he's talked about it any more since then, or has had any sort of update, and in that episode, he said he never planned on going back to the catacombs ever again. Either way, this clip really stuck with me as a kid, and I've always wanted to visit the catacombs, even if at least the two miles available to tourists. I've heard of some sketchy underground means of getting into the deeper areas, but for now, I think I'll just play it safe. Mr. Katia. What? Mr. Katia is a channel that was created in October of 2011 and to date has over 1,690 videos. Wow. This is one of those rabbit hole YouTube channels where the mystery is entirely that. There is a genuineness to this channel that gives many the feeling that the person behind it is simply acting as themselves with no ulterior motives or trying to piece together some sort of narrative. Many of her videos feature her simply crying on camera or talking about various things. She does mention in her channel description that she suffers from various mental disorders, so I think it's safe to say that this is just her way of entertaining herself and is simply what she does in her free time. Some of these videos do get quite strange, including huh. one in which she screams at the top of her lungs, and apparently oh, based God. on another video of hers, she does this quite often, and her neighbors even called the police to report this screaming. Why? Even going so far as to record it in case it could be used as evidence if something was actually wrong. Mr. Katia has a video in which she reenacts her interaction with the police officer who visited her home, playing both the roles of herself and the police officer and the conversation that they had. Ah. Uh. This channel, again, has hundreds of videos, and I can't go through them all, but I think it's safe to say that she's just a mentally ill person who uses YouTube as Probably. Ruff Batch. What? Ruff Batch is a now-deleted YouTube channel, meaning that many of the videos are now lost. The creator of the channel, reportedly named Anna Maskovich, had thousands of videos uploaded, though this exact number is not known. According to a Reddit post from 2011, as of the date of that post, she had 24,955 videos. Ah. Nearly all of her videos feature her speaking about various topics, cool. oftentimes around her home, but occasionally out in public where you can see many walking by, often stopping to stare as she yells into the camera. Much like the previously mentioned Mr. Katia, I think it's safe to say that Ref Batch is mentally ill and most likely uses YouTube as a sort of outlet for their voice, as well as possibly as a hobby to occupy their time with. Ref Batch has since started a new YouTube channel called You Don't Know, You Know, You Know, You Don't, in which still, to this day, she uploads constantly. Wow. As I write this script, like him. she has uploaded yep. 97 videos today alone and is currently standing at over 74,870 videos uploaded to this new channel, on top of the many more that were previously on the Red Batch channel that are now gone. I've got a golden ticket. Wow. This is a Willy Wonka parody video created by Meat Canyon, oh, yeah. in which a deranged and creepy Willy Wonka shows Charlie around his chocolate factory. It's, a. Uh, it's kind of uncomfortable, with Willy Wonka giving off some pretty heavy Predator vibes. Interesting placement having it this low on the iceberg, but there you go. Yume Tuki Zalgo. Yume what? Tuki is a fan-made sequel to the 2004 RPG Maker game Yume Niki. What the Both fuck? games involve the main character exploring their dreams with various objectives. According to the wiki, while the game is fully playable, it's still under development and being added to, which is an interesting premise for a game that's fully playable. There's a point in the game where you explore a dream that is themed around Zolga, the popular cursed text generator known for corrupting and distorting text to make it look creepy and strange. This would spread to artists, doing a similar effect to pictures, allowing for nearly anything to be affected by Zolga. A video uploaded by YouTube user Sara in July of 2012 shows the interaction with Zalgo that takes place within the game. Slowly, the floor below the protagonist, Arotsuki, starts to shift and distort as the what? characters grow more saturated and what? distorted. Given that, as I had previously mentioned, the game is still under development, there are reports that this event has changed numerous times, and there are also reports of it being much more nightmarish with disturbing imagery, loud noises, and rapid flashing. 
even from the few uploads of various YouTubers playing through the oh, no. portion of the game, they all look different in some way or another. Though I do naturally question the extremes some may go to when retelling their account of what they saw within the game. The fact that it can be changed and updated certainly makes for some creepy possibilities, and I feel more games should take this approach more often, especially horror games, to keep players on their toes. Lisa Holm Lisa Holm was a 17-year-old girl from Sweden who disappeared on June 7, 2015. With her body so, being found two days later. Oh god. Now, the mysterious thing about this case is that 13 days before Lisa's disappearance, a video appeared on YouTube uploaded to a channel called Lisa Home, and that video was called 13. All the video showed was a clock counting down for 11 seconds, and that's it. Nothing else to it. I remember when this case was going on, this video was getting massive attention in regards to Lisa Holmes' disappearance. Despite the fact that many believed this video proved that the murder of Lisa Holm was premeditated, authorities disproved the video having any connection to the case at all. So what? Was this all just a coincidence? Many people think that it was all just some disturbing joke made by someone who just so happened to upload a clip of a countdown timer. After the case of Lisa Holm came to light, they renamed the video 13 as it had been 13 days since the upload date of that video to when Lisa disappeared, and renamed their channel to Lisa Holm. Either way, at the very least, it brought widespread attention to the Lisa Holm case, and the case is considered one of the most infamous murder cases to come out of Sweden. Abstractions what? Abstractions is a channel that was created in June of 2016 and would start uploading videos in September of 2016. The videos are all very well shot, which is certainly a standout quality when compared to other channels similar to this. Now, I'm going to be honest, this is one that has a much deeper meaning than I'm going to get into in this video, but there are many great analysis videos made that really get into the depths of what makes this channel so great, among a sea of creepy YouTube content creators. Yeah, I, I guess so. The channel explores themes of dying, death, grief, and much more. It's honestly beautiful. Like, I know I said earlier that the videos are well shot, but that's such an understatement. I feel like the person behind these videos really understands how to artistically shoot, and it's certainly worth checking out. Of course, a lot of it is metaphoric and symbolic, but still, very much worth a watch, and I'm in no way doing it justice here. You kind of just need to see it. Abstractions would upload their, as of now, final video in May of 2021. The channel cool. only has a little over 5,000 subscribers, so if you want to watch something visually amazing that most likely hasn't been seen, check out this channel. Cool. Roro-chan 1999's final stream. Roro-chan 1999 was a 14-year-old streamer from Japan who would record herself doing various random things, oftentimes playing piano and singing. Honestly, I don't really have much to say leading up to what this point is about, however. It's really just a sad story about a young girl, and no one really knows why she did what she did, but there are countless theories. On November 24th, 2013, oh no. Roro-chan would livestream herself climbing atop oh no. a tall building and jumping to her death. Despite reports that many encouraged her, after reading what I believe are the stream chat transcripts, it actually seems as if a majority were telling her not to jump and trying to talk her out of it. But of course, there are a couple creeps in there who do tell her to jump, but they're definitely outweighed by those showing genuine concern. I think re-uploads of this video were able to exist on YouTube for quite some time, because despite Roro-chan jumping, you don't actually see anything, but nowadays, it seems that most of the re-uploads are now gone, but are available on other websites. What? Larry Carlson. Larry Carlson is an artist and musician who uploads psychedelic videos featuring both his art and music. Larry cool. created his channel in June of 2006 and still uploads regularly to this day. His videos are straight up acid trip simulators. That's the best way I can describe them. My personal what? favorite one is Live and Die and Live Again, which is the video what the you've fuck been is watching this? the segment. It's insane. He has a website called burning. Larry and he actually sells some pretty insane shirts and I kind of want to get one to be honest. Why? I don't know. Luis is missing. Luis is missing, also sometimes referred to as In the Dark, is a compilation of videos from the channel Luis Paxton that was created in February of 2007. This channel would start uploading in April of 2007 and upload
upload periodically between then and July of 2007, totaling in at 38 videos. The videos feature Louise Paxton as she vlogs her experience of moving from her hometown to a flat in another city. Everything would be fairly standard until her 11th video in which Louise recounts an incident that she had with a person possibly attempting to break into her home late one evening. What Despite the fuck? I agree. To the police, since Louise wasn't certain if the person was actually attempting to enter her home or just standing outside, they were unable to do anything. From here on out, Louise experiences various instances of paranormal activity, from noises to cold spots, and from here, it escalates. As the paranormal activity peaks, a final event would occur that would lead to Luis going missing. Luis's friend Lizzie comes to visit to help Luis get her mind off the activity and have some fun. While messing around with the camera after Luis had fallen asleep, the footage then jumps to both Luis and Lizzie investigating some noises they both heard before all hell breaks loose. This last video oh, no. would end abruptly with a message in the description from Lizzie saying that she found Luis's camera and phone on the floor of the bedroom with no sign of Luis. This final video would complete what is now known as Luis is Missing, which would gain a decent amount of internet notoriety back when it had initially concluded. Many believed the story to be true and that a woman named Luis Paxton had really gone missing to the point of a website called luispaxton.co.uk being created in order to help find Luis. Interesting. She was eventually found to be a project created by director Andrew Cole and was heavily criticized for faking a disappearance and, on top of that, going to such means as creating a website for it, artificially legitimizing the case. In some ways, some would say that you shouldn't take something on the internet so seriously and that obviously there is never any harm in making a project. But similarly to the Blair Witch Project, faking earnestly claiming your video to be real in order to stir up hype and attention can lead Why? to backlash from those who believe that anytime someone thinks it's real and reports it or claims they saw a missing person out in public, it takes resources away from those doing investigations into real missing people. Either way, as a now established fictional series, it's amazing. Seriously, this is a great watch and really I'm surprised it has as few views as it does. Please help me, the final video of the series only has 50 comments on it, the most yeah. recent being 13 years ago. That's pretty insane to me given how well done the series was, so definitely check this one out. Gemini Home Entertainment. What? Gemini Home Entertainment reminds me very much of the channel Local 58 TV that we talked about a while back, at the very least in regards to the aesthetic. This is one of the few channels that does the VHS filter right, without overdoing it or making it feel artificial. The channel was created in November of 2019 and features 18 videos as of the making of this video. The initial video, World's Weirdest Animals, starts off innocently enough until the end when the video mentions an animal called Woodcrawlers. The video mentions that they can take over human hosts and prefer to live among the human families of the host they inhabit. From here on out, the tapes would all focus on woodcrawlers and various ways to deal with these creatures. This series starts really strong, and the videos are all very compelling, telling the story of these creatures that, from the later videos, may quite possibly be aliens, especially given what is said in the video, Our Solar System. Despite totaling in it around 90 minutes of total video on the channel, Nexpo has a two and a half hour long video breaking down the series. So there's a lot Get it of off. certainly more than what callers? To I've never heard of that. They're so made up in the G43. You can make that a Pokemon. Why? I don't so know. Before we move on to layer six, there were two points on layer five that I could not find anything for. One was Russian alien sighting, which what? upon searching for on YouTube, came up with no results. And another was one simply called Teeth, which I tried searching for, and the only thing I can come up with was a couple of short films, but the other short films on the Iceberg all had short film in the name, so I don't know what this was. Anyway, on to the next layer. You, you guys want to continue? Two more, and then let's turn it off for tonight. Smile Guide, Crane, yes. Gazebo TV. What? So, this is one of the few points that include a channel, as well as a specific video for the channel. Kraina Grazebo TV, which I believe is Polish for Mushroomland TV, is an art project created by Victor Stroybog, 
that features a universe of characters in a mysterious land created entirely of Victor Strickland's design. Victor does all of the artistic work for this project, including the music, and has been doing it since December of 2013, and has uploaded new content fairly regularly since. The series very much takes after the style of a children's television program, sort of like Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, and other series like that that attempt to show themselves as potentially for kids, while the true content within is not quite so kid-friendly. Poppy the Performer, Limbo Episode. What? Poppy the Performer is a Japanese 3D animated children's television series that aired on the children's network Kid Station in Japan. The series had three seasons, with each episode being about five minutes in length. The show aired from 2000 to 2001 and is simply bizarre. The series focuses on Poppy, an apprentice clown who spends each episode performing different circus tricks from magic to acrobatics alongside his fellow circus mates. This show's animation is incredibly strange and something about it feels very odd, at least to me. This point specifically refers to the Limbo episode, so we'll discuss that one, but really all the episodes appear to have the same bizarre and unsettling quality to them. Limbo is the second episode of the first season and features Poppy simply attempting to Limbo, but can't seem to get it. Poppy's friend, Ketamono, then proceeds to flawlessly Limbo. Jealous of this, Poppy then lowers the bar and sets it on fire. As Ketamono attempts to Limbo again, Poppy turns into a creepy clown, which is why I believe it's on the iceberg, because on top of the imagery of this show already being incredibly creepy, this just adds to it immensely. The episode ends with Ketamono successfully limboing, but setting his tail on fire and setting off a bunch of fireworks by accident. This is without a doubt one of the strangest things I've discovered while researching this iceberg. Stickman in Russia. Well, guys, that's where we're going to stop for now. So, was that as worse as you thought? Hey, what do you know? It actually is pretty good. Yeah. Actually, you know what, AG, AG25? That was actually pretty good. Can we watch more of it? Well, at some point, yes. Okay. Well, it's currently 1023. You want to head back? Yes. All right, guys. Adventures await. Bye guys.